Guacamole Day, everybody, which, by the way, was September 16th, Intergalactic Guacamole Day. Also, the reason why aliens are green, it's because of the guacamole. That's why they come here. Yeah, look it up. I, I promise you, I swear, it's true. NASA said so. They didn't. Uh, so, two types of guacamole. I swear I'll get on track with this, I promise. Uh, two types of guacamole. There is guacamole Mexicana and guacamole Americana. What is the difference? One is a sauce and one is a dip. Uh, basically, that, that's pretty much it. Uh, guacamole Mexicana. I will show you that real quick. I'm going to make that and guacamole Americana because I like you guys and I want to give you both. So what do we do? How do we open an avocado? Well, you can probably go on Amazon and find an avocado opener. Don't buy that because you have one of these. Okay, so you just basically go in around this around your skin, go all the way around, boop, there you go, perfect, give it a twist, <gasps> pops clean, look at that, that's the most beautiful avocado you've ever seen, isn't it, yes it is, okay, the pit, how do you get the pit out of there, it's pretty easy, just give it a smack, a quick twist, and that comes out, how do you get it off of here, go from the back of the knife, pinch, there you go, all right, how you get this in there, don't care, if you want slices, the skins are really, really firm. Basically, just take this. This is an insanely sharp knife. I'm not going to do that with my hands. But if you want to do slices, basically just slice it in here. And I've already sliced up the skin pretty good. That's pretty funny. There you go. Slices. Avocado. Perfect. Get the spoon. Go in. Go around. Loosen this up. avocado slices there you go all right that is if you wanted to get nice beautiful slices of avocado that's how you do that it's the easiest way to do it there you go i'm not making avocado slices i'm making guacamole so i'm just going to take my spoon whip around you can kind of like skip the the very top where the uh, stem is or was and just uh leave that be there we go we got that and that now I'm going to open this guy because this is a two avocado guacamole. What's the difference between a two avocado guacamole and a three, olo, a three avocado guacamole? <laughs> Started thinking martini there for a second. Uh, the number of avocados, obviously, it was a trick question. It really wasn't a trick question. It just was a stupid answer. There's a difference. Okay. Bing, bing. Pop. Ooh, that one's got a big, big uh, seed in it. That's gonna make a really nice one. Pinch that off, there you go. All right, uh, avocados are amazingly good for you. By the way, if this has a bruise or anything in it, you can always just uh, pick around it. Don't uh, obviously use that part if it makes you squeamish. It's not gonna make it taste any different, but if it makes you squeamish, there's a fly in here. Flies love avocados. Okay, if, if, if the bruising makes you squeamish, then uh, just uh, cut around it, throw that piece away. All right, so we have all of our avocado skins here. Avocados have one thing, they have fat. They have a wonderful, juicy, oily fat. What are the two things they don't have? Salt and acid, none whatsoever. So, we have to add it. Um, salt, sea salt, use sea salt. I'm going to grind some fresh sea salt. This is Hawaiian sea salt in a grinder. Be somewhat generous because again that has no saltiness to it whatsoever acid we are going to use a lime to create our acid if you do not have one of these you can get one of these this one's fancy because it's silver it's it's still just the same crap um, you put it in here with the cut side down in the cup if you never used one this basically just turns the lime inside out and gives you a lot of beautiful lime juice. Now, a potato masher uh, works great for this, and I didn't get it up because I always have to forget one thing. Hold on. All right, I got it. Uh, we are going to just mash this up, basically. Doing this in a glass bowl may not be the best for this because it's a pain. 
but this is a video medium sort of thing that we're doing here and I want you to be able to see this okay if you like your chunky uh, guacamole that is where you basically stop right there let's give this a quick stir boom there you are any big chunks you want to get in there break them up okay there's guacamole mexicana that is it it is avocado salt lime and it is friggin delicious put that on your tacos put that on your everything put it on all that stuff the reason it doesn't have any vegetables in it is because they're going to have the salsa separate why would you put salsa in this and not, so don't if you're going to do that then don't do that but americans we take everything and ruin it so what do we do we take pico de gallo and we put it in that uh, basically, if you're in Mexico, you're going to get that and pico de gallo separately. You can control the amount. And there you go. Pico de gallo is also known as salsa mexicana. So we have guacamole mexicana and salsa mexicana. They go together, but they go in separately. That is your first guacamole. There you go. Congratulations. But we're going to turn that into guacamole americana by making a quick pico de gallo. I'm going to move a couple of things here. Reset real fast. This is a small kitchen with a small little area. Give me one second. All right. Cleaned up a little bit. Reset. We've got this sitting here. I'm just going to set this over the side for now and hope the fly doesn't land on it because it's in here somewhere. Uh, so, pico de gallo is just tomato, onion, jalapeno, cilantro. When you buy cilantro, if you like having it after you bought it, uh, bring it home, rinse it really good, and then put it in a paper towel like this that's damp. That will keep your cilantro good for a very long time. If you buy this and it has some dark spots in there, some dead spots, some parts that's starting to rot, that's your fault. You bought it. Don't do that. Buy one that doesn't have any of that and this will last much longer. If you like buying rotten food, I don't know, seek help. Beats me. Uh, and <laughs> these days it's really hard to not buy rotten food. But, also take the band off and kind of open this, it helps a little bit. Keep it from rotting inside. I did not do that because I just bought this, I just showed you. So, basically you just take this, like this, loose, rinse it out really good. Lay your paper towel out, like this, and just kind of roll this up. That is how you keep cilantro in your fridge for like a week or more. It's beautiful, it's wonderful, it's amazing. Now you know that secret. Hey, this is a multi-tip video. Okay, uh, for making pico de gallo, it's all about your cuts. Uh, you really want your cuts to be very precise, very small, very, very exact. And I'm going to show you a couple things real quick on that uh, because this is important. All the vegetables have been rinsed, washed, cleaned ahead of time because there you go. All right, so if you take... A white onion has to be a white onion. And I just remembered I forgot something else. This is funny. Okay. Um, we'll show you this real fast and then I'll grab the other thing. Okay, so we're gonna grab like the top, the, the skin on this, the parchment, whatever people wanna call it. Uh, peel that back plus kind of the next layer because that's not really edible. Now take a very sharp knife and people say come in this way. I don't really do that because the onion is segmented and it kind of comes apart anyways. So you want to cut these into very precise pieces, fairly small, if you're making pico de gallo. For this, you can go a little bit bigger, but a lot of people like that a little bit smaller because it's onion. Uh, so use the size pieces that is appropriate to you. I go about 3 sixteenths. Uh, that's uh, my desired size. So 3 sixteenths it is. So we just make a series of slices. This isn't the sharpest knife in the world right now. I forgot to sharpen the knife before the video started. Always sharpen your knives before you use them. Every chef does. I didn't. Sorry. All right. So we got our cuts going this way. Now we just come back this way. You've seen this trick a thousand times. Just do this. We do not need an entire onion for this. You really don't. All right. So, just uh, break this up. It's already basically broken up into little pieces. 
And there you go. There's a couple little pieces on the end that are a little bit bigger. Cut that one. There you go. Um, if you did that uh, more precisely, it'd probably work out better. But now you're going to spend way more time for that. One single cut? No thank you. Uh, I did forget one thing. There's a tip here on the onion. Hold on again. One second. Okay. Uh, you know how onions make you cry? You know how onions are bitter? You know how everyone's like, ew, I don't like raw onions. Well, that's because there's an acid that basically is inside the onion that you just cut open the little sacks holding it, and that uh, compound is very, very acidic and bitter. And people don't like it. Astringent, I believe, is the word that uh, people will use. Um, I don't know. Fancy people might use that word. What do you do? You put it in a strainer, run it under cold water. Just run that under cold water for a second. This is the uh, Rick Bayless tip on onions because he doesn't like onions. So this actually makes a huge difference and it makes this way better because otherwise you can get a really oniony overpowering uh, flavor in your uh, guacamole. Not everyone likes that. Okay, we're gonna just set that there. That's going to dry just for a second. I'm going to work on our tomato. Yes, this is a Roma tomato. Very common in Mexican cooking and pretty much works great for this. We are going to use a third of it maybe. Okay, great way to cut this in order to make uh, salsas, picos, um, uh, stuff like this. Okay, we take the top off. We cut this in half. Now we stand it on end. And we make that cut and you make this cut now you come through make these cuts I go a little bit bigger with the tomato than I did with the onion because it's tomato it's not onion and that last little piece is gonna to want to squirm on you it's just gonna happen okay now turn it this way and come through and as they get shorter they get a little squirmier you can get fancy with a sharp knife beginning and it just drags right through. It doesn't work when it gets really short. Okay, there's the, there's the uh, tomato. See how fast that was? Boom, we're doing this live, folks. Now, how much of this is going in there? Not a lot. That is two avocados. If you're doing three avocados, use more tomato. But we're only going to use a bit of this. Not a ton of it. Probably that is, is really... A little bit more. Okay, there. Okay, that's that. All right, we're still letting our, our uh, onion sit. The jalapeno, or as they like to say in Texas, the jalapeno. Because they can say it the right way, they just choose not to. We're not going to use this entire thing. So we are going to come through, we're going to cut this. Uh, you're going to take the seeds out because seeds are inedible. Everybody says the heat is in the seeds. Uh, the people that grow jalapenos uh, and other peppers disagree. I tend to grow, uh, uh, you know, listen to the people that are the scientists uh, and the, the different people making, the growing these things because they have to understand how they work. Uh, we anecdotally say that the ribs and the seeds have the heat. The people that are the horticulturists and the, the farmers and stuff, they don't think so. So, I don't know. Whatever. All right. So we are just going to dice this up small, 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 because no one wants that little nugget of heat when they're trying to eat this in the whoo. So we're just going to take and cut some long strips. You can get fancy and drag the knife if you want to. If you don't have a sharp knife, don't do that because it won't work. All right. Just cut uh, some strips right there. Again, about three sixteenths of an inch, something like that. And then we're going to just cut these into little tiny pieces. I don't know how much of this I'm going to use. Probably not all of it. It's like the tomato. You don't need all of it, and it depends on the size of your avocados. These avocados were a little bit small, so not too big. All right, that is that. You can see this perfect size here. That is what you're looking for. Those are going to go in here. We are almost ready for our onion. I think it's probably pretty close. I'm going to say that's about right. So I left a little bit, not too much. Uh, two-thirds of the half so what is that a third hey what do you know you're good at math all right onion going in if you do this like the Mexican flag you can kind of keep track of things so onions gonna go in here like this 
Boom, that is perfect right there. All right, and cilantro. Cilantro, you can use the stems, you can use everything. You probably don't want to use the stems too much with this because you're going to be eating it raw and the stems have so much flavor, they're crazy. So just kind of take a bunch and uh, give it a, a little uh, fold over sort of thing and just do this. Does not take a lot of cilantro. Okay, that is getting down to about where the stems are. So we're just going to set this back here. Take this, and just give this a quick chop this way, basically. There you go, eyeballing, that looks about perfect. Now, what do we do? We take our spoon, we give this a stir. And you have guacamole Americana, guacamole dip right there. That is basically uh, as hard as it is to make guacamole. That is a great, amazing guacamole. This is basically it. Now, uh, putting this in the fridge, keeping this, storing this. It has to be airtight. The browning is oxidation. You don't get oxidation if you don't have what? Oxygen. So deprive it of oxygen and it's happy. The acid uh, from the lime works great on this. Um, I forgot to get chips up so I can taste this and see exactly how that is so hold on one second okay i'm back uh my local market here makes uh, these chips fresh and so i use these because they're better uh now we just want to get in here and taste this what we're tasting for is the salt level and the acid level it's the only thing we can adjust at this point that looks beautiful that looks amazing i don't know if we got any yeah there's tomato in there it's cool all right that it's pretty good but it does need to sit because those flavors will kind of meld together a little bit better however it needs a lot more salt it needs a lot more salt all right and just a smidge more acid from this is going to be delicious and the other thing that you can do at this point is if this is this is pretty tight. These 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 avocados were pretty tight. So you can actually add a little bit of hot sauce to this to make this yummy. I like to use a green sauce because it's green. If you put a brown sauce in there, this starts getting muddy. Muddy guacamole is not the best thing in the world. So I'm going to show you one of my uh, favorite sauces for kicking this up just a little bit. Hold on. These are two pretty good additives for guacamole if you want to kick that up and you want to bring that to another level this is very untraditional but it is something i do enjoy in this you might as well if you want to go more more mild i suggest this the green tabasco is always fantastic and you basically just give it just a couple of squirts like that boom there you go give that a mix what do you know you've just made your guacamole tastes a lot better. Now, you want to use the habanero. Now, now you're stepping up. I'm going to use both because I can. This, you kind of do want to be a little bit careful because it's hot. I have, obviously, don't want to be careful. The natural cooling and the fat in the avocados really does take down the heat. That's why you can put a ton of jalapeno in here and every jalapeno is different um, but you can put a lot of jalapeno in here and it won't kill you until a little bit later when this sits that'll start leaching out a little bit more and it will get hotter so do be careful with that but that is probably stepped up quite a bit oh come on give me a real chip ah it's close enough ah, it's starting to break up obviously it's not a new bag let's see folks how do we do we get it better in a little bit <clears throat> a little bit of a kick just kidding 
Um, not not entirely kidding. <laughs> the salt and the extra lime juice really bring that alive. Just if, if you're trying to find the flavor and you're like, you see, see a little blanch, just try a little bit more salt and a little bit more lime juice. Incrementally go up because you can't really fix it if you go too far unless you have three or four avocados and you can start adding more to it. Then you get a giant bowl of guacamole about this big. Uh, and with this, until you know what this does, start small. You can always add more. It's hard to take it out. Basically, there you go. That is how to make my guacamole. It's delicious. It's wonderful. It's awesome. And uh, I think you're going to enjoy it as much as you're going to enjoy watching the next video that I come out with. Uh, and you'll know about that when you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell down there. Uh, YouTube will tell you when that video comes out. And then you can see more stuff like this when I see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.